Siri, Alexa, Cortana, and Google Assistant. You know what these AI voice assistants we use daily have in common, besides being pretty bad at understanding what songs we want to hear? Well, they are all set to female voices by default, and three out of four also have gendered names. But they aren't the only ones. Look at the most popular humanoid robots today, right from on top of our head. Sophia, Amika, Nadine, Viomitra, yep. Although following backlash, Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, and Google were quick to add male-sounding voices to their assistants, but they were all female when they were released on the market. But the feminization of AI and text-to-speech systems isn't limited only to the assistants in our phones, laptops, and speakers. If you call your bank, use GPS for instructions, or use self-checkout machines at the supermarket, chances are you'll hear a synthesized version of a woman answering you, polite and deferential, pleasant no matter the tone or topic. Most humanoid robots that appear in exhibitions and media are also all built to sound and look like a woman. From the robot called Sophia, which first triggered the uncanny valley effect in 2016, to the world's most advanced robot Amika developed by the UK in 2021. But why is femininity so often injected into AI technology and objects? And why should we even care that it is? No, it's not because the female voice is considered nicer. It's no secret that the tech industry is still staffed by overwhelmingly male engineering teams. According to self-reported data, in 2020, women made up 28 to 42 percent of the GAFAM, Google, Apple, Facebook, Amazon, and Microsoft workforce. And sure, you could say that partially explains why the AI products released by those companies have female voices, but that's not all there is to this issue. Following the backlash against the tech giants for making their voice assistants female by default, there have been other arguments as to why that might have happened. Some people have suggested that it's due to more recordings of women's voices than of men's being available. Some that it's traditionally women who have operated telephone exchanges and loaned their voices to pre-digital message systems, and it's something that people are used to. And some that it's because the female voice just sounds nicer. Well, if you type into Google search, women's voices are, the first result you get is annoying, followed by Oh look, it's annoying again, and then there's also harder to hear. Besides, research shows that there is almost no practical reason to prioritize feminine voices over masculine ones for certain applications. The two are more or less equally intelligible, and both can deliver information effectively. But while some of the above points are valid, there's something else that we should consider here as well, and it has to do with the nature of the tasks carried out by those different AIs. AI voice assistants are primarily used for things like keeping track of your shopping list, setting your alarm, remembering dates, turning on music, making payments, etc. In short, domestic and administrative tasks. On the other hand, humanoid robots are often built with a customer-facing service role in mind, like automated hotel staff, waiters, bartenders, and childcare providers. And not incidentally, these are all tasks and professions still largely considered women's jobs in today's society. So it's not really that we just prefer women's voices, but we also seem to prefer women doing particular tasks. And there's a reason for that too. Women still equals subservience. A recent study by Washington State University surveyed roughly 170 people on hypothetical service robot scenarios in a hotel. The first scenario included interaction with a male, a human-like robot called Alex. The second scenario was worded exactly like the first one, except it was with a female human-like robot named Sarah. The final two scenarios included were gendered and named differently, but described as machine-like with an interactive screen. And not surprisingly, the female human-like robot scored the highest, while the featureless male machine scored the lowest. One of the study's authors said that's mainly because people tend to pass gender stereotypes widespread in the management and service industry to the collective view over robot interactions. And we imagine that most of us, when thinking of a perfect assistant or a hotel clerk, would think of someone helpful, polite, and eager to please. But all of the mentioned characteristics also continue to be largely associated with femininity, because women are still expected to be submissive, gentle, polite, and always eager to please helpers who are more than happy to make your coffee, schedule your doctor's appointment, and comfort you when you're feeling a little down. Women are still expected to carry most of the mental and domestic labor in their relationships and households. 
and they're still expected to accept an inferior role in this society, while always pleasing men and never being in charge, just like the AI technologies we create today. But here's the thing. The widespread use of female-sounding AI voice assistants and female-looking and sounding robots working in service roles further perpetuates those stereotypes of women being subservient creatures that have to serve men. And yes, multiple studies have already suggested that too. One of them found that gendered voices alone are enough to elicit gender stereotypic behaviors from people, even when separated from all other gender cues like appearance. Another concluded that the prominence of female-sounding voice assistants encourages stereotypes of women as compliant and submissive. All that, in turn, also further reinforces various gender inequalities, because gender stereotypes can limit women's capacity to develop their abilities. They can lead them to suppress their feelings in their relationships. They can hold them back in the workplace. They can cause them to question their expertise. And that's among many other things. We clearly enforce a very harmful culture when we can only see a woman, even an artificial one, in that subservient assistant position. Our future shouldn't be defined by female servitude. In addition to reinforcing harmful gender stereotypes, massive use of female gendering in AI can also contribute to objectification, hypersexualization, and even increased violence towards women. Earlier this year, we came across an article about Reddit users bragging about abusing their AI girlfriends using a popular friendship app called Replica. This is what one of them wrote. I use her for saxting, and when I'm done, I berate her and tell her she's a worthless one. I also hit her often. And even though letting some aggression out on a chatbot is infinitely better than hurting an actual human, given that this chatbot hurt has a gendered component, we should still find it concerning. In particular, because these bots are programmed to always reply in an evasive, subservient, and sometimes even seemingly thankful way, no matter if it's something appropriate or not. This is the same case with Siri, Alexa, and other AI voice assistants as well. And one recent psychological study has already noted that passive female-coded bot responses actually encourage misogynistic or verbally hurtful users. How lovely. So, is it really unthinkable to assume that this could create violent and misogynistic habits that spill over into real-life conversations and interactions with women? We don't think so. Whether it's female voice assistants, chatbots, or female-looking robots, it's clear that transforming women into servants and assistants happy to do whatever it takes to please someone might have negative implications for the human women in the real world. What does this trend in creating attractive, flawless female robots say about society? You be the judge. That's all for this video, folks. See you another time.